The Trump Mar-a-Lago raid saga continues on. The judge today ordering that the Justice Department submit a redacted affidavit and that it be unsealed so that America can actually see what's going on. Trump, of course, has long been demanding this, and now it is coming to fruition. And so today we're going to take a look at several parts of this story. We've got, of course, the court docket. And as we learned previously from the docket, you can see several entries came about on August 25th, two of these. System entry, docket 88 restricted and sealed until further notice. And another one highlighted here, docket entry 89 restricted and sealed until further notice. And then the rest of this stuff is sort of appeals and so on, right? But this was the redacted version that the prosecutors submitted into the court. And they said, look, judge, you know, this is our proposal. This is what we think is, is reasonable here. And they were sort of encouraging the judge many times over to not make this public. Remember, Merrick Garland said Trump started making all this public, but if he started it, then we're okay continuing it until it came to the affidavit. Then suddenly they're like, er, pump the brakes. They threw it in reverse and they said, don't you even think about unsealing this because it's going to lead to people finding out more about our investigation. They're going to know exactly how we investigated Trump and know the witnesses and know the names and so on. So there was a big back and forth and Judicial Watch and others were arguing, saying, hey, we have a presumption of access here. You know, we sort of have the right to see this stuff. We still live in America, right? Sort of. And so we are taking a look now. The judge, right, submitted argument or required arguments from both sides, had oral arguments on it, and then today issued this order to unseal. And I want to just reference this. You see here it says ECF number 89. This, re this references the redactions from the search warrant affidavit, the same entry that we just saw right there. You see that right there, entry 89. So he says, okay, listen, America, let's pull this up. Here's the judge. The order to unseal from the Trump warrant judge who signed off on the warrant that allowed the FBI to raid his residence at Mar-a-Lago. The order to unseal is two pages, very short document. Judge Reinhardt tells America, he says, I have reviewed the government's memorandum of law and the proposed redactions to the search warrant affidavit. And he did this quickly. Like they just submitted those documents in docket entry 89 right there that he's referencing. And he's already got this order ready to go. He says, I am fully advised in the entire record, including the contents of the affidavit. Obviously, I read it before I signed off and approved the warrant. And he says the following, number one, I find that the government has met its burden of showing a compelling reason and good cause to seal portions of the affidavit because disclosure would reveal, number one, identities of witnesses, law enforcement agencies, and uncharged parties. And number two, the investigation strategy, direction, scope, sources, and methods would also be disclosed if I unsealed it. And number three, grand jury information protected by the federal rules of criminal procedure would also be revealed. And Previously on this show, we've talked about the different indicia, the balancing factors. And so the court has gone through this many times before and said, OK, if we talk about privacy, we're going to weigh that. OK, that's in favor of the government. And this one's in favor of Trump and so on. Now finding that many of these are in favor of the government. As further explanation for this finding, I incorporate my reference on my order on motions to unseal ECF number 80, which is where he really went through that entire litany of the indicia, all the different elements. He says, see, also this 11th Circuit case from 1986, if you want some more information on it. And he gives us some detail. He says, look, findings must be sufficient for a reviewing court to be able to determine in conjunction with a review of the sealed documents themselves, what important interests or interests the district court found sufficiently compelling to justify the denial of public access. Number two, he writes. Judge Reinhardt says, based on my independent review of the affidavit, the actual probable cause statement that was drafted by the FBI, he says, I further find that the government has met its burden of showing that its proposed redactions are narrowly tailored to serve the government's legitimate interest in the integrity of the ongoing investigation and are the least onerous alternative to sealing the entire affidavit. Because remember, there's two layers to this analysis. One, we have to go through the indicia and talk about privacy rights and government prosecution rights and public access rights and all of those things. But if there is another mechanism by which to sort of accomplish the ends, we have to actually say, you know, look, if we are going to seal some of this, it's got to be the least restrictive thing and it has to be necessary to do it. 
And the judge said it is. So finding that, yeah, it should be redacted and finding that the redactions are appropriate as written, right? As on the documents as they all match. So he says, therefore, it's ordered that the intervenors, so this would be the media, okay? This is Judicial Watch, ABC, WAPO, New York Times, all these people. Their motion to unseal is granted in part. Why? Because it is going to be unsealed, right? The government wanted the entire thing to not be unsealed at all. So it will be unsealed. It's going to be covered out in black redaction boxes, right? Probably not going to see much on there, but at least it's going to be granted in part because we're actually going to see something called affidavit with a bunch of redactions on it. So he says, yeah, we're going to grant it in part. It's not, not a huge victory depending on the redactions, but we'll see. So the deadline comes, the judge says, on or before noon Eastern time, Friday, August 26, the government shall file in the public docket a version of the affidavit containing the redactions proposed in ECF 89.1, which was what I showed you previously. That was filed under seal. So it sounds like they're just going to refile a new one and it should more or less match that. Done and ordered in chambers this 25th of August, 2022, West Palm Beach, Florida, Bruce Reinhardt, magistrate judge out of the District of Florida. So we can see that that is the actual order. Now, we were looking to see if the redacted affidavit was going to be filed, but it's looking like it has not hit the docket yet. Government prosecutors are still going to be assembling that, and it's got to hit the docket by tomorrow noon Eastern. In the meantime, remember that when they filed that, they also filed it with sort of a brief, a memo, a justification for why, why the different redactions are necessary, right? Not only did they file the affidavit with the redactions, but they also filed an explanation saying each one of these redactions is necessary because, and so we want to see that too. We want to know what their explanation for all of this was. So as you can see, another sort of big docket entry that hit the docket today in the Trump Mar-a-Lago search warrant case. He's got two cases that are going on. One's the search warrant case. One is his complaint against the government for a breach of his constitutional rights. But here on August 25th, look at this one filed by all of the media companies. Here it is again, the Associated Press, Dow Jones, Times Publishing Company, EW Scripps, McClatchy, NBC News. We got the Washington Post, CBS, New York Times, all of them all submitted this motion. It's a motion to unseal portions of the government's brief addressing the redactions. So again, the media, all of them are like crashing in here and they're making very good arguments for Donald Trump. They want to see not only the affidavit, but the accompanying memo, the brief that explains the redactions. They say that the public needs to see this stuff and all versions of sealed documents should be basically presented to us. So let's take a quick look at that motion as well, which I believe I have not pulled up, but I will do that now. This is the media's request and the media, right, is that sort of conglomeration of all of these entities. So let's get our red pen out and we'll read what they're saying. They say, look, we just don't want the affidavit. We want the justification for the affidavit as well. Four pages. It is the sealed search warrant. And this is the media, the intervenors, like their motion to unseal portions of the government's brief addressing the redactions to the search warrant affidavit and for public filing of the redacted versions of all the sealed documents. And it's everybody, right? It's everybody that I just listed. They say, you know, WAPO, New York Times, ABC, blah, 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 blah. We hereby move for an order, number one, unsealing portions of the government's brief that was in 88, right? So two things got filed. Addressing the redactions to the affidavit of probable cause submitted in connection with the search warrant on August 8th at Trump's residence in Mar-a-Lago. We want to see what your explanation was here, not just the affidavit, because there's a lot you can glean from that, right? You can, there's a lot you can say, oh, right? You, you want to know, okay, this, this paragraph was redacted, but why? Right? The paragraph tells you a lot, but an explanation about why you don't want that scene also tells you something. So the media wants to see it. And number two, they are directing, they're saying, judge, can you please direct the government going forward to file a public redacted version of any sealed filings simultaneously with the sealed version? So let's just ease this whole thing up a little bit. Remember when we went through this with the GMJE case many times? 
what would happen is GM would file a bunch of uh, lawsuits and they would go through this process uh, emotions and then it would go through this process where they'd say okay we have to file it under seal the judge would say what's in the motions and they'd have sort of additional conferences to uh, or deadlines to propose redactions before the actual unredacted motions would hit the public dockets and it took forever i mean we were like reading motions like 60 days after they were actually argued it was the most annoying thing ever so what they're saying here is can you just 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 do it like simultaneously so we don't have to go through that stinking process? They say lawyers for Washington Post, CNN, NBC News, Scripps, AP, and others, they all conferred with the government regarding these requests August 24th and 25th and was advised that the government does not oppose the filing of this motion. Very good. We'll see. Now, they, the argument, they say, like the search warrant affidavit itself, the brief is a judicial record to which the presumption of public access applies. Court has already gone through this. They say, yeah, look, an unprecedented search, right? They put that in here. There is intense public interest and historical interest in an unprecedented search of the former president's residence. Yeah. And the government bears the burden of demonstrating that a sufficiently important interest in secrecy justifies the ceiling. At the same time, the court has recognized the government's interest in protecting the integrity and the secrecy of the ongoing criminal investigation, and the media intervenors are sensitive to the balancing of interest required by this court. But that being said, Judge, they say, that said, to the extent that some of the portions of the brief could be made available to the public without jeopardizing the investigation, the government should be required to file a redacted version of the brief with those portions unsealed. Furthermore, and to avoid unnecessary motion practice in the future where we have to go, you know, redact it, file, you know, uh, have a re uh, redaction deadline and then, you know, submit it again and again and again, they say, we just respectfully request that the court direct the government to file a public redacted version of any document filed under seal in this matter simultaneously with the sealed version. All right, we don't want to have to fight over this every time. As this court has also recognized, there is little interest in maintaining secrecy with respect to the facts about the investigation that the government has already publicly confirmed to be accurate. One of the leakiest investigations that's ever happened. I mean, every day there's a new New York Times story. We're going to talk about one of them today. Many confirmed facts about the investigation into Trump's handling of records have already been made available to the public, including through warrant materials already unsealed in this matter. Attorney General Merrick Garland came out and he was yapping from a press conference when he says, I personally approve this. And statements and materials released by the National Archives and records have already corroborated a lot of this as well. Additionally, public statements by Trump in his pending motion for judicial oversight, which is in the companion case and elsewhere, disclose events that may be recounted in the government's brief. In other words, why do you need to keep all this secret? It's already been published. It's out all over the place. At minimum, any portions of the brief that recite those facts about the investigation without revealing additional ones not yet publicly made available, and in addition to any other portions that pose no threat to the investigation, should be unsealed. If and when they write additional facts come to light and are confirmed to be accurate, or certain facts no longer pose a threat to the investigation, then there is no justification for maintaining them under seal either. Furthermore, any legal arguments in the government's filing should be made public, even if some of the facts of the government recounts remain under seal. And they co conclude the following. They say the media intervenors respectfully request that the court enter an order, number one, unsealing portions of the government's brief, and number two, directing the government to forward, going forward, to file a public redacted version of anything that they file under seal so we can see at least a little bit about what they're filing. Submitted by lawyers for the media. You can see they've got several different attorneys here. Carol Jean Lo Cicero. She's hailing from Florida. This guy, Charles Tobin, is over out of D.C. We've got Elizabeth Seiden Bernstein out of Pennsylvania and somebody else out of Florida. A lot of attorneys all over the place. You would expect that, right? Lawyers for the Palm Beach Post. This guy's Dow Jones, ABC. WB, NBC News, CBS, New York Times, all crashing in there because it is Trump and they love them some Trump and they want to see what are in those briefs and the affidavits. Now, Donald Trump, very active on tr Truth Social, and he had several things to say about these recent developments. And so we're going to check in with the former president over on Truth Social 
And of course, if you want to uh, follow yours truly, I am available over there. And so, as I said, Trump was very active today. So let's sort of scroll down and uh, see what he's got. Oh, he's posting <laughs> the, the, the Scott Adams quiz. Yes. All right. So he is, well, as I'm, let me just cue this up so that I don't have to, you know, uh, blind everybody with all the scrolling here. This is Trump who posted this this morning. And here he is. He says, uh, America, Trump writes, even though I am as innocent as a person can be, and despite my campaign being spied on by the radical left, the FISA court being lied to and defrauded, all of the many hoaxes and scams that were illegally placed on me by very sick and demented people, and without even mentioning the many crimes of Joe and Hunter Biden, which we are going to get to, all revealed in great detail from the laptop from hell, it looks like more fake news media is pushing hard for the sleaze to do something that should not be done. And so, right, Donald Trump is calling out the double standards, massive double standards that exist. Previously, we talked about Joe Biden responding to Peter Ducey when he was asked about what he knew about the Donald Trump raid at his residence in Mar-a-Lago. And he said, I know nothing about it. Zero, he said. Trump responds. He says, Joe Biden said he knew nothing about the break-in of Mar-a-Lago or the greatest political attack in the history of the U.S., does anybody really believe this? No, obviously not, right? That's ridiculous because that would mean that Merrick Garland is sort of just prosecuting Biden's political enemies without his knowledge of that, which seems like a weird thing to have your Department of Justice doing if you are the president, but okay. Donald Trump also writes, he says, the radical left Democrat prosecutors are illegally trying to circumvent for purely political gain, the Presidential Records Act, which we've talked a lot about, under which I have done absolutely nothing wrong. It cannot be circumvented for me or any other president. They illegally raided my home and took things that should not have been taken. They even broke into my safe, an unthinkable act. That is from Donald Trump. And then his next post is just, Presidential Records Act! <laughs> and he's exclamation point and he's dead right we spent a lot of time talking about the presidential records act that was the same act that judicial watch lost to judge amy berman when he was trying to get tom fitton and his organization records about bill clinton and the judge said uh, it's the president they've got presidential records act authority and trump is referencing that he also says the Justice Department and the FBI are leaking at Neville at levels never seen before. And I did nothing wrong. And this is true, right? And we talked about this on our morning walk and talk, which our members uh, get, whether you're on YouTube or on locals. But the idea is that Merrick Garland is telling us that he's only speaking through his court filings and that he has an obligation to uphold the integrity of the Justice Department, while simultaneously every day there's a new story in the New York Times. There's a new leak everywhere you go. Donald Trump also posted this on August 25th, a statement by Trump about Joe Biden waiving student loans, canceling tens of thousands of dollars in payments for many Americans. Trump says Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats have just orchestrated another election and enhancing money grab, this time to the tune of 300 billion. And just like I predicted, it's coming right out of the pocket of the working class Americans who are struggling the most. Crippling inflation, unaffordable energy prices, and war, all things that should never have happened. But if it wasn't enough, now Americans are bailing out college administrators who flee students and those who opted for degrees. There was no way they could even afford. America is a nation in decline and the cliff into oblivion is within sight. Stop voting for Democrats. Make America great again. Donald Trump on True Social. And uh, you can see, you can go follow him over there at Real Donald Trump. And so he's asking the same questions that many of us are asking. A lot of issues with the Presidential Records Act. And we spent a lot of time talking about those, in particular, when we mentioned Judicial Watch and Tom Fitton and their conversation about this when they filed lawsuits and Freedom of Information Act requests 
to obtain individual presidential records. Now, an interesting story came out from CNN, and they're saying that maybe there was this sort of relationship between Donald Trump and Judicial Watch. They tell us over here from CNN, they say, not long after the National Archives got those boxes, they say Trump began taking calls from Tom Fitton over there at Judicial Watch, a prominent conservative activist. Fitton, a longtime head of a legal activist group, Judicial Watch, had a simple message for Trump. It was a mistake to give the records to the archives and his team should have never let the archives strong arm him into returning them, according to sources familiar with the matter. Those records belong to Trump, Fitton argued, citing a 2012 court case involving his organization that he said gave the former president authority to do what he wanted with records from his own term in office. That's the Clinton sock drawer case. That's Judge Amy Berman's ruling on this. The Judicial Watch president suggested to Trump that if the archives came back, he should not give up any additional records, according to sources with knowledge of their conversations. None of this has been previously reported. Now, they say, while Trump continued to publicly tout his cooperation with the archives, privately, the former president began obsessing, they say, over Fitton's arguments, complaining to aides about the boxes that were previously handed over. Trump even asked Fitton at one point to brief his attorneys. Somebody said the moment Tom got in the boss's ear, it was downhill from there, they said with anonymity. In a phone interview, Fitton would neither confirm nor deny the conversations he's had with Trump, but noted that, yeah, he's been vocal on social media and television, saying Trump did have the right to keep his documents because he took them with him at the end of his presidency. Now, Tom Fitton made that argument in his lawsuit, or actually, he said he should get access to the records, but the, the lawyer and the judge in the lawsuit said that he was wrong, said that Clinton actually had total deference and they had the ability to retain those documents and not disclose them. And so we see that the search warrant order has come out from the judge telling the government to file an unredacted or a redacted affidavit unsealed tomorrow. And we'll take a look and see when that comes out.